So today I'm planning to discuss with you about the automobile suspension system. But please note that uh, in this level, at your level, I'm only planning to discuss like very briefly, not going into very deep, uh, uh, deep uh, areas or at least no calculations or anything like that, because this part is somewhat complicated, right? Anyway, so basically today what I am uh, I am planning to discuss is why suspension system is needed. Basic terminology when we discuss of what are the basic terminologies needed when we discuss about the automobile suspension uh, and the classification classification of the automobile suspensions and types of suspension systems available. Yeah, sorry. So if we start from the first point, why automobile suspension systems are needed? So the requirement of the suspension system actually uh, came or generated mainly because of the um, uh, passenger comfort, right? The suspension systems were actually designed or developed to provide the passenger comfort. So when, since vehicles were actually started to get faster than uh, horse carriages, the vibrations that they generate, the white vibrations and the road uh, surfaces, how this road surface is transmitted to the uh, passengers became very uncomfortable for the driver, the passengers. So to isolate them, so to isolate the passengers and the road vibration or road uh, vibrations and noises, is actually why this suspension system was first introduced. But with the introduction of the suspension system, there were some other problems came. For example, when you have a suspension system, uh, if you consider a normal car, automobile, so when you go around a corner, you know that uh, because of the weight transfer, it's actually lean into one side, right? So that sort of issues started to generate. So to fix these things and other uh, few more additional components and included. So later and uh, later on, we ended up actually getting the suspension systems. Now we are actually having, right? So a suspension system is very important. Number one for uh, pro um, providing this uh, passenger comfort. Number two is actually uh, to keep the wheel in contact with the road at all times, right? So that's one of the main or the key uh, requirement of a suspension system. So uh, for the, the reason for that is for a vehicle to be in control, for the vehicle to actually uh, control itself properly, it actually have to con be contact with the flow or the ground at all times for the braking, acceleration, handling, cornering, everything you need to actually have or the, these uh, vehicles actually need to have a very good uh, contact patch between the road, right? So whatever the uh, road condition might be. So if you, it might be go, or you might be going on off-road or on the road or for whatever it is, the vehicle should have very good uh, contact with the ground right with that ground in order for vehicle to perform well so that's one of the um, key requirements in addition to that when you have a suspension system it should be able to actually withstand the additional load you are actually included into the vehicle as well so with that uh, if we consider about the suspensions uh, functions what are the functions it performs so number one is supporting the weight, no matter what, whatever the weight, you, whatever the weight actually rated the vehicle for, it should be able to support, right? It should be able to support that, it should be able to, it's standard, it should be able to, uh, the vehicle should be able to drive with that particular load without uh, rubbing the wheels or grounding the vehicles or something like that, right? Absorbing the road by vibrations, as we told, uh, as I told you earlier, it actually absorb any road vibrations. Allow vehicles to take corners without extreme body roll. So, as shown in the uh, image below, right? As seen, uh, shown in the image below, when the when a vehicle is actually moving, right? When a vehicle is actually moving, when if it is actually taking a turn, it actually started to 
role or it's actually try, trying to lean into one side. So these sort of body, this is actually called as body role, right? This is called as body role. These sort of things are not actually good. So the suspension system should be able to uh, stop this or to at least to reduce it up to a certain extent and prevent excessive dive and squat. Dive and squat means, uh, so if you look at the front image or the top image, you can see a vehicle starting to accelerate. So this is when it's actually picking up the speed, right? It's accelerating at that time because of the weight transfer, vehicles rear end of the vehicle actually squats down, right? Uh, squats down. So that should be allowed up to a certain point, right? It should be allowed up to a certain point for the vehicle to get the necessary grip, right? Necessary grip or to have the uh, transfer the uh, vehicles store into the ground, right? But it should not be too much. If it is too much, the vehicle again uh, will be started rubbing, right? And the dive means when you apply the brakes, you know that uh, the front of the vehicles actually goes like right, dives. So that's also not, should not be too much, but it should be there. If it is not there, the whole uh, sudden momentum change has to be actually absorbed by the people or the drive the passengers itself so this should be allowed but up to a certain extent right so that's why this suspension system is necessary so i will allow vehicles to steer steering system should be able to properly work by keeping the vehicle aligned and maintaining the min maximum road contact at all times so whatever the condition whatever the road condition is the wheels should be touching the ground at all times that's one of the main important part of a suspension system so there are basic just few basic terminologies when we discuss about the uh, when we discuss or when we discuss about the suspension system so you can see a image here so this is actually known as the axis convention of the uh, of the of an automobile right axis convention of the automobile so what it actually uh, gives is a term of reference to explain where the vehicle's movement is. For example, so there are three axes here, right? This red axis, which is against the length of the vehicle's order. Oh, we'll start with the black line. That's the axis that goes along the length of the vehicle, right? That's the X axis. And the Y axis is the one uh, that goes along the width of the vehicle, right? And the Z axis is the axis that goes along the, or the parallel to the uh, vehicle's height, right? So these are the three axes. The rotations around A, all of these three axes have different names, right? Different terms. So if there's any uh, rotational movement of the vehicle along this Y axis, it's actually called as pitch. Right, it's all actually called as a pitch. So that means the vehicle picking up or this uh, squatting and uh, diving is actually comes under this pitch, right? And this uh, rolling, which comes around X axis, is actually comes where it's, you can actually see this when vehicle is turning or taking a turn, right? Similarly, this Z axis, the movement around the Z axis, you can see in when you actually taking the turn, this actually this also happen. But uh, when vehicle is trying to drift or when it's trying to slip away, in such cases, your wing is actually present, right? So you should be knowing this and you have to, when you are explaining some things, you have to use these terminologies, right? You have to use these terminologies. So, yeah, so again, uh, if we come back to the roll, right? Roll, as you can see here, now this is the X axis, the turning around the X axis. In this case, it's time to take a turn or taking a turn that actually ended up having a body roll. So this is body roll. So roll part is actually comes because of this is around the X axis. The roll center is, in this case, roll center is the center at which the sprung mass pivots around during a roll situation. Now you might be thinking, what is the sprung mass, right? So sprung mass, uh, we have it later also, 
Sprang mass means the ones, the whole weight that's actually supported by the suspension system. Sprung mass means the components, all the components that's actually uh, supported by the suspension system. So when the vehicle is actually moving, the weight transfer actually happening for this sprung mass only, right? Because the sprung mass means the suspension components that are actually uh, kept on the suspension system. So that's actually responsible for this movement. And the um, when we come back to this roll center, roll center is a dynamic view, right? It's move around based on your speed, how you are traveling, what is your suspension type. So it's actually changing. It's not like center of gravity. Center of gravity is a uh, stationary thing, but uh, the roll center is actually not like that. It's always change, right? Again, we discuss about the pitch. So pitch is the y-axis. So the movement around y-axis is pitch. So pitch also have a pitch center, which is at the sprung mass pivots during pitch situation for and after acceleration. For and after acceleration means uh, when you accelerating and once when you finish accelerating again coming back to the resting position. So that that movement is the simulator is squatting and diving. When you apply the brakes, the front. Um, face goes a little bit down. So that's actually dive, right? So again, this is also a dive, right? The dynamic point, right? This is also a dynamic point. But both of these things are these two points, the pitch center and the uh, roll center are influenced by the vehicle center of gravity. Center of gravity means the maximum weight, yeah, the single point that we can actually put as the most of the weight acting on. Right, so sprung mass. So again, now the sprung mass, as I told you earlier, sprung mass means the old components that do not move much when suspension is displaced. So uh, the right. So that means the everything uh, that is not connected to the. That, that's not uh, related to the suspension system. That means the body, so as you can see in this image, so you can see there are no wheels in this car because this is a reference that's showing, uh, this is, the, it's just a reference to show what is the uh, sprung mass is. So sprung mass in this case is the, uh, um, the, <laughs> the components that's, on the suspension system. So that includes the body, the engine, all the heavy components of the vehicle, right? As shown here, frame, passengers, etc. Some suspension components are actually partially sprung mass. Some components are partially sprung mass, such as the, uh, such as the um, dampers, right? Such as dampers, because they are one part uh, moving and one part not moving, right? So that because of that, they come under sprung mass. Unsprung mass uh, means all the components that actually connected to the uh, needed for the operation of the suspension system. That includes all the suspension joints, arms, the wheels. In this case, it's actually showing the uh, this steering system also, but steering system does not come as a sprung mass. And uh, these coil springs, the dampers, everything actually comes under unsprung mass. So if you can minimize the unsprung mass, right? Right. If we increase the unsprung mass, the, the suspensions operation is not that well. Right. If we reduce the weight of the unsprung mass, more better suspension can be achieved. That means more comfortable. So that's one of the reasons for these huge heavy vehicles to be heavy means like heavier cars and all to be a uh, bit more comfortable, right? Bit more comfortable than the other vehicles. Um, so next thing we need to actually discuss about this uns after the unsprung and sprung mass, there's, uh, so the weight, when this uh, unsprung mass is actually moving, there, there's a maximum limit it can actually move without disconnecting from the sprung mass, right? Sorry, without uh, moving, I told it uh, the other way around. So without, uh, so bump means actually without disconnecting from the unsprung mass, how much sprung mass can be 
moved right i don't know whether you mix it up so that means how much is the maximum uh, movement allow for these components that are not related to the suspension system right so that's what uh, there's something called bump stop bump stop me comes from this term right it actually comes from this term so the maximum travel the body in this case the body frame and everything uh, has that's actually comes as the uh, bump so that's a vertical distance only right the vertical displacement how much it can move bump travel means vertical distance travel uh, vertical distance is able to move from static position with reference to the vehicle's sprung mass so that means the movement of the vehicle style right so how much wheel can be moved while the uh, sprung mass how much the sprung mass can actually move when sorry how much the wheel can move while the uh, vehicles is in the stationary position right vertical distance is the wheels able to move down from the static position with reference to the vehicle sprung mass right so that means it's coming this uh, the reference is always the sprung mass so that means the body is the reference so the group means maximum it can actually travel right maximum it can travel so all of these things are just used to terminology so this is what are the terms that we use to explain the suspension system but the suspension system very well explained in this even though you, you are not going in up to this d right the vehicle suspension system can be very well shown in here so if we consider about any of the modern or uh, uh, modern suspension systems these are actually known as two degree of freedom systems right two degree of freedom system so here if you come to this image right if you come to this image there are two sections right there are two sections so here k and c so these these are actually representing the springs right these used to represent the string this one is actually used to represent the dampers right so you can see there are two dampers right and one unsprung mass the vehicle mass means all the components that uh, that's sprung mass vehicle mass means the sprung mass right vehicle mass is the sprung mass this is the unsprung mass so between the unsprung mass that means the suspension right the suspension components and the vehicle you have the coil spring and we have the damper that means your shock absorber right and uh, between this sprung mass and the road again you have a similar uh, characteristic is available with the tire and the, the component and so that's what actually shown here so this is a one quarter of a uh, one quarter of a vehicle so four corners of the vehicle you have this right this particular arrangement is available in four corners of the vehicle right so springs dampers and tire all three are actually giving the same output all, all three are actually working together in order for our vehicles to be very comfortable okay uh, so we if we come here right if we come here this is the two degree of freedom system and this is actually we call it as a half uh, half scale half quarter model sorry half model right this is a half model you can see half of the vehicle is shown a similar arrangement is available in the other side of the vehicle right other side of the vehicle so this is what we need to we use to actually uh, or design and develop a suspension system right so uh, to optimize the suspension system we start from here right the basics are starting from here this is a very important part which i'm just explaining you uh, how the suspension system actually built 
So you have the uh, dampers and springs are there, but you need to know where these dampers and springs actually came about, right? So these actually came about using this uh, simple arrangement. We start from this simple arrangement, even though it seems very simple from here, these, yeah, if we do these calculations, it could go up to like two, three pages continuously. It's very long calculations, but uh, these are very, uh, but not hard actually. It's not that hard. It's very simple calculations, but long, right? But uh, we start from this uh, over here and we expect from here. So these parts we usually cover in uh, this uh, basics of this, how to calculate these damper, dampen ratios and these, um, spring rates and everything in the dynamics of mechanical systems then we use it in the vehicle designing modules so uh, whatever this suspension system so whatever suspension system it comes the design and development is oh we, if we try to represent them in a, a mathematical way it actually comes like this right it comes like this and uh, if we consider all these suspension systems, there are two main types of suspension system. They are the independent suspension and the rigid suspension system. The main difference between these two are in the independent suspension system, the opposite wheels of this axle, right? Opposite wheels of an axle has no connection between them, right? So that means the front left and front right are not having uh, not sharing any connection between there's no rigid connection between them so each one can move by itself so all four wheels in most cases all four wheels or at least one uh, part of one uh, axle can move free rigid suspension means oh uh, the opposite wheels of an axle is directly uh, joined right linked together they have a hard link they can't move alone if left right is moving sorry if if uh, left rear is moving that uh, creates uh, that again actually going to affect on the uh, right rear as well right right rear as well is going to be affected so that's what actually means by rigid suspension system so uh, rigid suspension system is very good because that system is very robust right it's very hard to break but the independent suspension system is very uh, comfortable right comfortable but it can't take as much as load as the rigid suspension system so rigid suspension system can take a higher load compared to independent suspension system so that's one of the main reasons for us to see independent suspension systems in the passenger vehicles like the cars, vans and sort of vehicles, but the rigid suspension systems in the heavy vehicles like uh, trucks, buses and all, right? And there are a few other advantages. This independent suspension system, the component, there's a lot of components involved. So it's heavier, right? It's heavier and it needs too much of space. The sprung mass is, higher comparing to un, uh, sprung mass unsprung mass of an uh, independent suspension is somewhat higher most of the time compared to a rigid suspension system in order to give that uh, necessary rigidness into the suspension system right so so this actually shows what i meant by uh, its uh, effect of the suspension system. So the first one is the independent suspension system. So you can see this wheel on the right is actually moved, right? It's actually moving upwards, right? But uh, it's not going to affect the wheel on the left, right? So there's no change in the wheel on the left. It's only affecting itself. But in the non-independent or rigid suspension systems, because these are rigidly mounted, right? There's a rigid axle, right? Solid axle. So these, because of this mount, right, this mount, when this layer, right side wheel is going over a bump, it's going to affect on the uh, left side, right, and its camber is actually changing. So compared to the top one, the cambers are changing in the rear, even though it's only affected the, uh, this one is changing the camber. And uh, more worryingly, as you can see, the axles 
location changed and that ended up creating a creating or uh, transferring it up to the body right up to the body it's very, very easily this can actually transfer to the body comparing to this where the body or the frame seems to be in very uh, level level in a level as before so uh, when we come to this independent suspension system uh, usually we discuss about the independent suspension system a bit more because the most of the passenger vehicles or automobiles actually use independent suspension system right so independent suspension system uh, we have two main types of independent suspension system first one is the macpherson strut type and the second one is double vishwana uh, suspension system so uh, there are a few disadvantages and advantages with them so we'll go ahead and discuss about them so we'll start with the double wishbone suspension system so this part over here right this is actually known as the uh, this wheel nut right this is the wheel knuckle i told you the steering knuckle and everything so this is the steering knuckle right then we have a shaft here going outwards which is the spindle that's where you our wheel is going to be fixed okay so you can see there are like two arms right two arms connecting into this bishbone right so these two are actually the, to this knuckle right so there are two arms connecting into the knuckle so uh, these two arms are actually known as the wishbone arms right these are known as the wishbone arms so the term wishbone actually came from uh, some animal actually i couldn't remember the name of the animal uh, fish or something some animal actually has a similar bone which is known i think chicken or something uh, the uh, similar bone in their body and it's actually known as a wish bone it's called as a wish bone there's some uh, system where you break that uh, bone and similar to this a shape something like that that's why this is actually known as a wish bone right so there are two arms one is upper arm and the other one is lower arm right so then you have this coil over and this is the suspension the other components that means the coil and the damper right so these two are only connecting to either one of the wishbone arms or the knuckle itself the advantage of this is as you can see there are two arms and uh, since all these points this one sorry this one this one and these two are pivot points which allow the knuckle to move freely from all these points allow uh, provide the maximum contact patch because this uh, uh, when this uh, move these arms are moving the knuckle is always straight right always straight so that means something like this so even though move if we look at from the side right if we move like that right so that's this is your knuckle right that means at all times wheel is going to be contact like so wheel is in contact like this even if it's the other way around the wheel is contact like that so that means very good contact patch no camber changes so because of that this system known to be very good right known to be very good sorry but uh, that's not all the good things there are disadvantages as well so uh, those are the good things actually since the suspension system allow the wheel to move up and down only vertically right it's allow more uh, vertical movement that's actually supposed to uh, provide very good ride um, um comfortable ride provided and steering is very precise and uh, ground clearance is uh, can be maintained and one important advantage is since the camber is not changing it's very good for 
high performance application so most of the race cars actually or the sports cars actually comes with these suspension systems but the disadvantage is yes you need more money has to be spent on this because uh, you have too much components or too many components in this right maintenance cost is high because you have see you have one two three four five six joints so these joints has to be replaced at some point so these are going to be expensive and frequent wheel alignment is needed because there are too very too many adjustments in these means it has to be uh, properly dialed in very frequently uh, if not uh, the tire wear could actually increase uh, yes and mostly used for suvs and cars this system is not uh, that good for going in like um, uh, for heavy vehicles applications right but the solution for this came as the macpherson strut right macpherson strut so if you look at this one you may be seeing that this one also seems to be uh, somewhat similar except for missing a one arm right yes it's actually this one actually missing one arm that means the upper arm is actually missing instead of having the upper arm the coil spring or the damper is the damper or damper assembly right so this coil spring assembly or strut assembly is directly connected to the upper portion of the knuckle right upper portion of the knuckle as you can see over here right wait there is this so this one over here so you can see this shock absorber came here and it's correct directly connected to the upper portion of the knuckle you can see it over here as right so that allows to clear up this space right and you don't need you don't need actually that uh, you, you don't have this uh, upper arm so that actually reduces the cost right reduces the cost and it's actually save a lot of space this is very useful right this is very useful this also give a similar characteristics but uh, not that similar to the um, double wishbone arm suspension system double wishbone arm suspension system can actually provide a very uh, uh, with, uh, can allow the uh, move wheel to move without any camber adjustments but uh, this one uh, there's a small camber change is actually happening because the strut right because of this strut as you can see it's not possible to fix it there. it's not possible to give a, a similar rotational capability at this point over here so as a result of this actually has quite a bit or somewhat less uh, suspension accuracy is there Right. But it's not a big deal because this is the mostly used suspension system. Mostly used suspension system. If you look at almost any of the daily driven passenger vehicles, the passenger cars, SUVs, this system is used, right? This system is used. And this is actually used with the app. All the suspension systems actually use with the anti-roll bar. So this is the anti-roll bar. It's a lot it won't uh, this is used as a safety measure this is a safety measure this is actually a torsion mark, right this is a torsion mark, which we will discuss later on right? um yeah so since this is not needed the previous amount of components and since all the strut or the suspension components so this coil and spring are usually assembled into one single component in this right so this is actually this component is actually known as so this assembly is known as the strut assembly right strut assembly as shown here so these struts right these struts are directly bolted to the frame or the body body of the vehicle right body of the vehicle so if you look at uh, open a bonnet of a car you can see like there are two points like this right that uh, these comes and being connected right these comes and being connected so uh, this is the most widely used suspension system mainly because of the cost benefit and the space saving so there's less space is needed unless there's a special requirement for using the double fish per arm it's almost unheard of to use them without the good reason right good reason yeah so 
uh, again, this uh, advantages wise, it's light. Less components means it's lighter. Camber does not change due to up and down movement, but it's bit change compared to the previous one. Maximum engine compartment availability. So front wheel vehicles, very happy to have this because more space is available. Rear suspension assembly. Uh, when you have independent suspension in the rear, this is a very good system to use. Maintenance cost is less, initial cost is less, ride comfort is very good compared. It's almost comparable with the double spinam and this one. I can't almost see, can't see any difference between them. Um, yeah, disadvantages wise, not suitable for heavy motor vehicles. Yes, similar to the double spinam, this is also not capable of taking that much of high load as you can see. Uh, most of the load is directly carried by the strut assembly itself. So there are some disadvantages like that. Um, yeah, but um, these are the two independent type suspension systems available. And uh, if we move to the solid uh, rear, solid axle suspensions, right, or rigid axle suspensions, the rigid axle suspensions also use the same components, right, same components, but uh, their arrangement and everything is, could be somewhat different. Right, could be somewhat different. So the one shown here is a solid axle rear suspension. This is one of the most common type of solid axle rear suspension used. So in this type of suspension, right, in this type of suspension, the solid axle is used as shown here. Right, uh, instead of having the leaf springs, this is used in the cars and SUVs and sort of things. Uh, instead of using these leaf springs, it's using coil spring. The advantage of coil spring is uh, coil springs are actually more comfortable for the passengers, right? But uh, they have less load carrying capability comparing to our usual leaf spring arrangement, right? Leaf spring arrangement is have more capability of taking more load or have taking more weight on them, but uh, coil spring is uh, very comfortable because they are soft. Okay, so uh, the, the reason for that is the spring rates. Spring rates of these are actually lower than the spring rates needed for uh, usual for day to day uh, leaf spring and arrangement. Uh, yeah, so in order for this uh, axle to keep, right? So the, there are two ways this axle will move. Right, there are two ways this axle will try to move. When vehicle is trying to, uh, uh, when it is actually traveling forward and backwards, the axle has to be in the same place, but it should be allowed, the axle should be allowed to move up and down only, right? Up and down only. So you have this one, two, right? These are two trailing arms. There are two trailing arms that are supported right that are supported so the axle can't move front or back right but it's still allowed this since these are pivot points these are pivot points still the axle can move actually up and down right up and down but uh, there's another problem now uh, these are supported here, but uh, you can see there's only small support is given here. So that could end up actually moving the axle left or right. Right, axle could move left, left or right. So moving left and right is also a problem. Why? Moving left and right means uh, <laughs> maker cannot be actually aligned properly. So to fix this, we have this one over here. You can see this one over here, right? This is actually known as pan hard bar. This one over here is actually called as pan hard bar, right? Pan hard bar, again, you have two pivot points, this one over here, this one over here. With these pivot points, it's allowed the suspension to move actually up and down without letting it to rock left and right, right? So that's how a normal rear axle uh, suspension system is fixed. 
So even though this VA suspension system seems to be very um, rigid and all this system is very common to use in the cars. Cars also because this arrangement can actually give a soft suspension arrangement with the very comfortable rides. The other type of suspension arrangement is this one, the leaf spring types, right? The leaf spring type is actually mainly used to provide this uh, uh, necessary weight, to carry them necessary weight. And uh, in some cases, if it is mentioned, for example, this stock cars, the one mentioned here as stock car, stock cars means a type of a racing type. In that uh, type of racing, its uh, regulation says, the vehicle had to use uh, leaf spring. That was like a long time ago. Nowadays, it's not actually valid anymore. Uh, yeah, advantages wise, it's actually easier, cheaper, and uh, simplified drivetrain layout because you have less components, less moving components, less. You don't need CVs or anything. You can just only have a prop shaft. That's enough, right? Or propeller shaft, right? In addition to that, uh, the amount of load you can carry, how uh, uh, and what sort of a spring types you can use. You can use either coil spring or leaf spring, but in an independent suspension system, leaf, using a leaf spring is uh, somewhat difficult. It can be done, but somewhat difficult, right? So this system is very uh, versatile. It's very versatile. So it's most of the time, this is also being used, but uh, there are some disadvantages as you can see. Uh, uh, because of these uh, springs, these uh, uh, leaf springs, right? These uh, leaf springs have this uh, um, sort of like a bow shape, right? So bows, uh, bows shape, uh, in order for these springs to work properly, they need to have a very low unsprung mass, right? Low unsprung mass, or having a high sprung mass, right? High sprung mass. If both are properly matched, only these will work properly. If not, because of def because of this deflection, these sort of deflections, right? These sort of deflection could end up actually uh, creating something called wheel hop. That means it's trying to like jump. Vehicle is trying to jump. Right, uh, uh, sort of like a jumping sort of actions actually create. So you, this uh, you should try YouTube or something and try, try and see what this field of this is a phenomenon that actually happens in uh, if you are traveling in like a hill or something. This can be very easily seen. Then the problem actually comes with this uh, leaf springs, as I said earlier, only, only these two leaves are actually and the uh, damper and the damper actually trying to keep the suspension in one point. So that's why this, uh, this can actually move into similar way. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to the solid axles, I told you how this uh, that camber is actually changing. So this one actually shows this image. Uh, it's actually showing very well. In the first one, it's uh, the vehicle is in a static condition. Now, because of that, uh, this the camber is actually not moving. It is not this point, right? Uh, this point over here. Point over here, it's in contact, right? Uh, then we see over here, it's not in contact because of the suspension movement, it's actually moved, right? But uh, mostly consider about this camber angle, right? This camber, 
even though the wheel is actually going over in the right side right right side only goes over bump right right side only goes through a bump so this bump creates the camber changing in the opposite direction in the other wheel right so other wheel that means the opposite uh, wheel of the axis right so if it is this is a negative five this actually moves by positive five if this is positive five this is uh, the other one actually moved by negative five. so this movement this movement uh, is not good one reason is because of this change the tire contact patch actually change in addition to that this uh, rebound or this uh, uh, resetting time it actually creates like a violence vibration sort of action so that, that's what actually happens with this uh, camber change so it's not the ideal case So if you move into this uh, suspension system of a vehicle, we have several components, that several components that all of them use, right? If whatever the suspension type is, almost all of these suspension types are using uh, similar components. So the same components arranged in different ways, right? Arranged in different ways. There's like margin suspension, this time that suspension, all of these actually, have the same components but they might have arranged them in a different way right that's the main difference between all of these suspension system so basically the suspension system comes with the tires linkages bearings springs and dampers so tire we are not actually going to discuss here as i told you in the previous class also tire is a very complicated part to discuss and uh, linkages also uh, some things we will be discussing we are discussing not at this level but uh, i will give you some introduction into these springs right some introduction into these springs and dampers so the purpose of the spring if we come back to the springs the purpose of a spring is to store the energy and release it back right store the energy and release it back if we come to this particular uh, suspension arrangement the spring here when it's actually meet with the bump right because of the bump this spring actually retract and oh it's moved upwards right move upward then uh, that energy the energy that actually absorbed by the spring and stored it as soon as uh, that uh, bump finished, the spring try to push it back from the inner stored energy and dissipate it back and comes back to the natural position, which is this, right? So for this spring to work in that action, the spring is fixed in two directions, two points. So there are two points. One is actually the hanger. This one is the anchor, hanger, right? So over here, it's actually pivoted. Right, it's actually pivoted. So there's one uh, bushing goes through it. So this uh, point can be actually turned. That point is allowed to turn. The other side, if you come here, you can see like a small, like a lengthy component, right? Lengthy component here. So this part is actually called as the shackle. This allow to uh, spring to change its length because of the deflection or the change of this shape it's actually need to change uh, increase or decrease the length so that's why this shackle is there it's allowed this suspension to move right this suspension to move and the axle is bolted right axle is actually bolted to the spring itself as shown in the below image using this u bolts these are actually called u bolts so springs, uh, this is only showing the uh, leaf springs. I'm not actually planning to discuss about the coil springs that much. Uh, but torsion bar springs, yes. There are three types of suspension uh, springs that you see in a vehicle. First one is the coil spring, leaf spring, and the torsion bar spring. So coil spring, you all know. Like leaf springs also you have seen. But the torsion bar spring is the least common, right? Least common one, but most convenient. One. 
So torsion bar spring is actually a bar that being mounted in one point, right? Mounted from one point to the chassis or the unsprung mass of the vehicle, right? Sorry, one point to the unsprung mass, the other side to the sprung mass, right? So as you can see, as you can see on this image over here, so this is the sprung mass, that means the chassis. This is the unsprung mass, there are two mounts. So this point is not moving, only this uh, suspension arm, when this suspension arm is moving, this uh, torsion bar, right? This bar is actually trying to rotate, right? It's trying to rotate, right? It's trying to rotate against this point, right? This point is stationary, this is rotating. So that create a torsional effects. The torsion is uh, again a way to store the energy, right? So that stored energy again will be returned back in order to keep it uh, or stay, bring it back to the previous um, position, right? So this type of spring, the, this one I actually explained you earlier also, this is how the torsion is actually measured from the angle over here. And this one is stationary. This is the angle that torsion or the rotated tension, right? And what the length and the diameter of it. Okay. So uh, when we come here, sorry. One thing we have to understand: uh, since this uh, suspension system is very compact. Right, the suspension system is very compact. As you can see, the spring is very compact. So that actually allows the suspension system to be fixed in a very small spaces, right? Very small spaces. Vehicles such as, uh, uh, yeah, um, this Volkswagen Beetle, those cars actually use these sort of torsion bar suspension, right? This is very convenient another way because this is uh, lightweight and easy to fix and easy to adjust compared to the other springs. Right height and everything can be changed very easily because only you just have to change the location of this bar. And um, yeah, as said here, it's uh, not that uh, good for heavy vehicles because this whole weight of the spring of the vehicle is actually supported by this torsion bar so it could uh, it could actually break very easily to fix that uh, there are the coil springs and other type of springs are there right one uh, place these suspension systems are or these torsion bar springs are used is the race cars so the race cars need to reduce the weight and the space that they are using and everything. So this torsion bar suspension is very famous. One advantage of using these four race cars is, since race cars have very rigid suspension system, the suspension movement is very limited, right? Suspension movement is limited. So for torsion bar suspension, the limited uh, suspension movement is very much needed for them to work properly. So it's actually a very good solution for racing car applications. So here you can see a coil spring and a leaf spring arrangement for a suspension. This is the front both are actually uh, steering axes. That means front axis, front axle steering. Arrangements are somewhat different in each other, but the components wise, you have the coil spring, here you have the deep spring, you have the dab. Here you can't see the damp. Oh, yeah, shock absorber is inside of here. The shock absorber is here, and you have the axle, and everything else is as usual. So, these are the main components that will change. Next, we move into the damp, right? Next, we move into the damp. So the purpose of the damper is dampening the movement, right? Dampening the movement. So when a 
we'll actually move right when we move if we do not have a uh, damp right it takes too much time to actually come to a rest right so you have two lines here just the thick line is without the damp right thick line is without the damp so the string so we go through a bump right bump and it comes back and again goes like this until the energy dissipated right until the energy dissipated this is actually going to continue right what damp does is that dampening it or it softens the uh, this movement how it does is it actually has a small sort of a hydraulic fluid that goes through a small hole so when the spring is moving backward right when the spring is moving backward uh, since that dampener is also connected to the suspension itself right suspension itself it uh, the spring the energy stored in the spring has to actually move that fluid back right move that fluid back through the hole right that means push it through the hole in order for suspension to come it back to the resting position so more energy is needed in this case so the spring or this uh, movement or the oscillation of the suspension will actually finish early right will finish earlier and the uh, deflection or this movement actually reduces quite a bit from here to here it reduces quite a bit over here it's almost uh, almost unmissable compared with one over here so that's uh, that is why it's actually uh, important to use this uh, dampener so without the dampeners it's actually going to continue uh, this oscillations until it's uh, ran out of energy to do so but in a road that's almost unheard of because the the roads are not exactly uh, smooth right roads are not exactly smooth so if you look at the dampener it's actually looks like this there are few types of dampeners uh, i'm not actually going to go through all of them at the moment but uh, basically what you have is like a piston right piston moves through a fluid there are small holes in this spring right there are small very minute minute size holes right there are small holes in here so since this is a fluid if we try to push something through the fluid there will be a resistance that is what actually used in this dampens effect so there are very small holes when this is actually moving right when this is actually moving right that effect right that effect that the fluid trying to move through this, right trying to move through this creates a resistance to overcome this resistance the spring has to use some of the energy stored through the bump right through the bump it uh, stored some energy that actually has to be dissipated to go overcome this uh, resistance right this resistance so that's how this uh, suspension actually reduces so damping effect actually but it's very simple so this hydraulic dampers is the one used mostly there are other types of dampeners as well but uh, this is the most common type so there are two rubber bushes actually placed in the either side of these uh, dampeners just to keep them um, well isolated from the uh, or, the, or to keep the uh, vehicle passenger compartment isolated from the uh, these movements so uh, suspension in the suspension these are not actually comes in one single components coil spring and dampener have to work together in order for them to work properly right in order for them to work properly they have to work together I, if we put either one the performance or the their their uh, output though, is not that much acceptable in these vehicles right so both have to work perfectly in order for deliver the best results. Uh, yeah, so we have these bushings in the vehicle. So all these control arms, the upper arm, lower arm, 
everything actually have a rubber joint so uh, basically you what you have to remember is these rubber joints are only used right only used for isolation of the vibrations there's no other vibrations coming so as you can see there's uh, other than this uh, rubber mounts there's nothing else in between this the vehicle frame and the uh, controller so uh, because of this right because of this this is having this is actually important right but but there's there are some disadvantages of this. since this is actually rubber mounts these are actually having certain amount of flex right certain amount of flex so these actually have a very small uh, movement right movement right so that actually going to transfer up to the steering right and that could be uh, somewhat um, non responsive steering responsive may be changing if you are actually traveling at very high speeds it's going to be visible bit uh, visible more right it's going to be felt more if it is in the lower speeds it's not that much visible but uh, the only so the best solution is to actually make them hard mount that means directly having uh, just bush bearings or ball bearings or something like that but uh, it's going to actually uh, increase the vibration or the harshness of the vehicle will be increased so most uh, passenger vehicles do not have it but in some applications when the steering precis uh, precise steering is very important inside uh, in those these type of steering uh, suspension arms uh the rubber bushings are not uh, used for example race cars they don't have these rubber bushings because having rubber bushings is not their main priority is going fast and not going uh, comfortable right so uh, that sort of small differences are there but uh, for these uh, bushings right these bushings so here this one this is actually one of the types used so this is the one actually we used in a normal uh, day to day vehicles so these are like we call them as ball joints right these are called as ball joints or spherical bearings so these are uh, the ones we actually use the comparing to this this is actually solid mount this same thing these both of these are doing the solid mount same thing that allow the movement of a 360 degrees movement but this is a solid mount Right. This is a solid mount. Right, this is a solid movement. This is a solid mount. Solid mount. So uh, harshness of the vehicle or the vibration transfer is high. Right. Same same thing for the bushing. So these are actually known as polyurethane bushings. So we have rubber bushings and we have uh, polyurethane bushings and we have um, hard mount or uh, something like aluminium bushings. So what happens with these? Uh, polyurethane bushings is it's actually in the middle of the other two that means in between the rubber and uh, steel mounts right so this gives like a very good uh, vibration absorbs them eh? but uh, less uh, effect on the steering end so the some of these components if you uh, once you come to the faculty i'll show this so in that uh, formula say car we actually have this uh, spherical bearings as well as these uh, polyurethane and uh, teflon bearings have been used right uh, yes so that's it actually this is the end of this session so uh, with this this is the idea that part i am supposed to discuss for this part suspension system so with this uh, there are some things i actually added for you guys to uh, watch a little bit more and read if you are interested in more about this you can read and uh, what sort of calculations or do a small basic calculations to find out about the suspension system is included here um yes so next section is for uh, discussing the electrical system right Elect 